Hey there, I'm Catherine with Science is Fun, and today we're going to make a water glass xylophone. First, let's gather our materials. You'll need several glasses. If they're actually made of glass, that works the best, but make sure to ask an adult before using glassware. You don't have to use wine glasses like I have here, but they work in a special way that I'll show you later on. Now, pour a different amount of water into each glass. You can add a drop of food coloring if you like. Uh, you don't need to, but it does make it prettier. Finally, you'll need something to tap the glasses with. In my case, a pencil. And now make sure to tap the glasses gently. What do you hear when you tap the glasses? What happens when we tap a glass with less water versus a glass with more water? Do you hear a difference between the two? The sound from the glass with the most water sounds quite a bit different from the one with the least water. What is causing this difference in sound? Well, sound is a wave, a vibration. When we tap the glass, we cause a vibration that transfers from the glass itself into the water inside. If you look carefully, you can sometimes see the waves on the surface of the water. The vibrations of the water itself transfer into the air around us, compressing the air molecules into a wave pattern that travels into our ears and vibrates our eardrums. Our eardrums then send signals to our brain that we interpret as sound. In music, we refer to the sound of a musical note, whether high or low, as its pitch. Think about a xylophone. The larger pieces of wood or metal make lower sounds, and the smaller pieces make higher sounds. Why is this? Well, in the case of our glass xylophone here, the glasses with more water have more matter or stuff for the sound vibrations to travel through. This causes the waves to be spaced further apart and our brains interpret this as a lower pitch. The glasses with less water have less matter to vibrate, so the sound waves are closer together and produce a higher pitch. This is an example of something we call frequency. When the waves repeat more frequently, we say they have a high frequency, which generates a high pitch. When the waves repeat less frequently, they have a low frequency and produce a low pitch. What other things around your house make sound vibrations? Do they make higher pitches, lower pitches, or somewhere in between? What does that tell you about the frequencies of the sounds that you're making? There's another cool way that you can make sounds using wine glasses. Make sure they're rounded and have a base with a stem that lifts the cup part off the table as the table will dampen some of those vibrations and make the sounds harder to hear. Now take your index finger and dip it into one of the glasses. Stabilize the base of the glass with your other hand and gently press your moistened finger onto the rim of the glass. Push down just enough so that it makes a kind of squeaky sound when you wiggle your finger back and forth like this. Don't press too hard. Now, keeping that same amount of pressure, draw your finger around the rim of the glass until you hear a ringing sound. Keep your other hand on the base of the glass to make sure it doesn't fall over. You may need to press more or less, move faster or slower, and this takes some practice, but you'll figure it out. This is another way, besides tapping it, to create a vibration in the glass, by friction. Friction is the resistance of motion when one object rubs against another. The forces of your finger against the glass causes a vibration that travels in a circle around the sort of sphere of the glass and the water inside. Vibrations that bounce around continuously in a circle like that, adding on to each other, are called a resonance. And things that are able to hold a resonance are called resonators. There are resonators for all kinds of waves, sound waves, light waves, radio waves, and so on. Remember I told you that you can sometimes see the vibrations in the water? Well, if you use this finger trick on a glass that has a lot of water in it, the waves are actually very visible since they're larger and you can make a continuous ringing sound and observe the waves for a long time. The last thing I have for you is a song. All glasses are shaped a little bit differently. You may notice I added another one here. It's taller and slimmer, so it makes a kind of different sound than the other ones. But if you play around with the amounts of water in each glass, you can get the right pitches to play some of your favorite tunes. See if you recognize this one.
Hope you had fun making a water glass xylophone with me. And thanks for checking out Science is Fun.